Hello, Jim Dramatic here. Welcome to the worst weapons of Series 3. Last week, um, which is I two minutes ago, we've just recorded it. Um, <laughs> we did, we, I know, the power of editing. Uh, we uh, did the top 10, our top 10 best uh, weapons of Series 3. We all did our, each our own list, and we had some nice variation. It wasn't all just too predictable, apart from maybe... Maybe the top two were identical, <laughs> but it's to be. It, it was they were very obvious, and you haven't seen the. I'm not going to spoil it, but you probably could guess which ones number one and two. But if you haven't guessed, you're a bit of an idiot for some reason. Go and watch the video. Go and watch it, like it, whatever, and then watch me mess up at the very end of the video after all that time saying series three. I say series two, but <laughs> n- now we're doing the worst weapons, and unlike the best weapons, where you could actually, I think every single robot we talked about, you could debate putting in a top ten. God, it is so hard to choose on the worst. There's that many. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's so many robots that have very similar weapons that are all shit as each other, so you have to pick one for the worst of the worst. Because there's, like, tons of bad axes. I mean, Excalibur, pretty much, and Exterminator are probably the only good axes or slash picks in the entire series. There was no good axes apart from that. Um, spikes are very common. Uh, obviously, we have to include. We have to include. We're basically doing the series eight rules onwards, seven seven rules onwards, where you can only have motion weapons. So no spikes. Unfortunately, Stegosaurus can't make it on any of these lists because it does have a tail, but never use the tail. So we'll yeah. co- that's the big honorary mention for the best list. If it if it were on a separate category, <laughs> that and uh, one hundred one because one hundred one spike didn't do anything either. It was more of a brand bot. But um, <laughs> yes, without ado, I will say I'm going to say my tenth worst weapon, and it is Daisy Chopper. I, I was going first. No, I'm going first. Oh, cool, cool. Daisy Chopper. Ooh. Mainly because it looks intimidating until it actually does anything. And then it <laughs> and then it just falls apart from there, because I, I I gave Caliban the benefit of the doubt and put it on number ten on the best weapons of series one and two list just because we didn't get to see it. We actually yeah. got to see what Team Caliban can do, and I kind of regret putting it on the list now. Um, see that that no, you should, the weapon should have been angry protesting. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, uh, but yes, Daisy Chopper just it just it just whacked into Griffin and just flipped itself over and just kind of like yeah, it wobbled, which didn't help. <laughs> what was this weapon? I don't. It was so thin and spindly, and it barely spun. No, it barely it was spun. So slow, <laughs> as Mike would say, you can count the RPMs on it. That's yeah. it was so slow. And again, it looks intimidating. That's the thing. It's this giant. It's funny. The Caliban team made the first full body spinner. To appear on TV because obviously William Dervish also was before we spinner, but it also made the first kind of nightmare-like flywheel, the first big vertical flywheel, and they both sucked. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which says a lot about British robot wars in general. Our Americans come in with nightmare, and then we have this thing. It nightmares like kind of like alpha build. Basically, it, it's like a nightmare is Robot Runner Two DSL, and nightmare and 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 Daisy Chopper is the original stock version. <laughs> that's basically what it is and it could even damage Griffin it's made of plastic so all that centrifugal force and it could do fuck all with it it's number 10 because it actually spun and it actually worked how it's supposed to even if it didn't actually do anything but it's all bark and no bite pretty much yeah uh, you're yeah. number 10 then Anderson right now I've, I've mentioned this beforehand and James did accept it um, but I, I've kind of cheated a little bit because it's not really a moving weapon, but there's a reason why I've kept it on there. So I've put Henry's Spike on there. Oh. And the reason why is because, one, if you dare enter that little pointy piece of plastic on the front of a machine and say, that's your weapon, <laughs> fuck off. And two, it stopped the robot from moving. <laughs> yeah, it got so, stuck in the floor so many times. So as far as I'm concerned, yes, okay, it's technically it shouldn't really count. That's why I've only put it at number 10. Hmm. But if it, you know, if you're gonna take something as crap as that and say it's a weapon, and then have it so it doesn't even, so it basically affects the way your robot works. Piss off! Yeah, it's, it's it's crap, and it belongs on the list. I'm sorry. It That's makes why it it's number ten because it's not a moving weapon. Makes it all the more unfortunate that Henry Two just got KO'd in like two seconds. It is because they made a robot. Is, <laughs> consider it. I mean, you know, those are two robots that you would, if you had didn't know the names, you would never guess they were from the same team. And it is a shame that Henry 2 did die as quickly as it did, but unfortunately we'll never see how good Henry 2 was. And sadly, we will always have the memories of Henry being crap. <laughs> Don't forget the granny in the back. 
<laughs> oh god. Uh, I guess n- number nine. Um, j- j- right, this thing is so deadly, so deadly. <laughs> it can cut a watermelon in half. <laughs> it's toe cutter's little spring powered spike blade <laughs> thing. Jesus, I mean, I love the fact that this thing. Right, people might say, "Oh, it did damage." Yeah, it did damage to purple predators. Uh, skin. I guess fur. we'll call it furry yeah. skin. I mean, first, it's fur. I mean, dear, I mean, Roadblock broke it in series one, and dear, on Nemesis. Who cares? This is a blade. It's mm. it's going to cut through fur. Of course it does. It didn't do any damage to the robot. And then Panic Attack came and went. Well, what? It's too low. This is a stupid <laughs> idea. And they kept and they tried to come back for series four and five with basically the same robot with the same weapon. And I'm like. And there's the one the reason you didn't get into series four and five because your robot's too high up and your robot's a spring powered s- slicer. So, mm. yeah, you, you, you got to give points for originality. Yeah, well, okay, I'll give them that. But then you got to be effective as well. <laughs> exactly, real but effective. Um, I mean, I'll be honest, the reason why that they're not on my list is because of the originality. Um, Fair enough. I just think everything else on this list is bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's too bad for it. I mean, you know, that, that's at least got something redeeming about it. But I can completely understand why it's on your list, man. I really can. <laughs> it's just shite. It's, I think it's also it, it, it's, it's, it's a shame, really, because they they did seem really proud of it. Bless them. And it's like, oh, but it's shit. I, oh, I think what got him. me, what makes me laugh more about it is that unlike all the other robots on this list, on my list anyway, they really put a ham- amped it up. Like Toko was gonna be the next destructive robot, and it just it just didn't do anything. Like, cause it can't do anything. Cause it's it's spring it's spring powered blade. It's basically equivalent of just getting a um, getting like a a, sh- a, <laughs> a, sh- a shaving thing, a shaver from um, those old barbers, and putting that in front of your <laughs> and your robot, and then calling that a weapon. It's like that little thing that Shogun switch blades. Yeah, yeah, Shogun had in the back of it for some reason. There is one that that's basically what they had, but spring powered. And it's, it was terrible. But uh, what is your number nine then, Anson? Uh, my number nine is Bumblebot. Bumblebot. The robot's weapon that was so bad that Dead Metal quit off. <laughs> yes. The weapon, the robot, that weapon was so long it couldn't hit anything. Now, the reason why it's so low is because in their defence, it did look quite powerful on the two times we saw it fire. Two. But I mean, how unreliable does your weapon have to be where it fires once and dies? I mean, they could be secretly using it as a ramming weapon. We don't know. <laughs> their, their plan the entire time. But yeah, I think it's yeah, it's a bad sign when Dead Metal gets rid of it. <laughs> yeah, it, it's. I mean, it, too long for its own good. And Very ineffective. Um, like I said, I mean, it, 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 honestly, if it was shorter, I think it could have been a relatively good weapon. And had it actually moved, we were going to work more than once because that thing did come down quite hard. Mm. But they definitely didn't bash him, as they said they were going to. <laughs> it's just a. Sh- I mean. And also, they did I mean, this, the, only, did... the only good thing it really did was stop it from falling in the pit properly. Yeah. <laughs> and, that, and, that, and, that's, and that was after it got cut off as well. I mean, that just shows you how freaking long that thing really was. Actually, good question, right? Uh, was the, I swear the axe is longer in Series 3 than it was in Series 2 in the Reserve Rumble. Oh, it is, yeah. Yeah. It was, about to the <laughs> it was actually okay in the Reserve Rumble, but no, yeah. I mean, it also seems like, if you exclude the axe, I swear it's like one of those robots that goes from Series 2 and 3 that did not change at all. Like, it looks the same. <laughs> like, the axe changed, but it's like not as bad as Napalm. Napalm will always be the worst for ch- not changing the robot, but battle damage and all. Uh, and now mandib- they're not on the list, by the way, only because I've been basically the same saying, saying the same thing I did on the previous list about his mandibles. So <laughs> I left them out. I left the mercy of not putting them on again. Um, but yeah, Bum- I forgot. I actually completely forgot about Bumblebot. That's how much I give a shit about it. <laughs> I wouldn't have put it on the list probably anyway, but I, I respect you for at least mentioning it because someone needs to mention Bumblebot at some point. Yes. Bumble. Um, number eight on my list is possibly one of the slowest robots and least in a f- least effective out of everything in Piers in Series 3. It's only at number 8. Shows you how much about how good this series was. Was Hammertron. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> the, I mean, the thing you're right, Hammertron's A, it spun really slowly, but also the fact that axes were on hinges so completely ruins the point of it. <laughs> um, it's I will, like hitting someone with a straw. Hmm. <laughs> I will. <laughs> <than bendy> <laughs> it pretty much is. I will give Hammertron one piece of credit though, which I will admit, if it had worked, it's actually a unique idea. Is putting the, like they actually had a self writer on on it. 
Like, yeah. the, the lid lifted up. The only problem is the weapon's attached to the lid, and you can see the exposed motor underneath it, so it's kind of a hit-or-miss thing. And also this yeah. thing locked in place and couldn't get himself right in the first place, so... It, it was... It's a great idea on pi- on paper, but their execution was terrible. Yeah, I tried it in Robot Runner 2, and it actually was okay. But in real-life robots, no. No, it doesn't work. And Hamatron's weapon itself, I mean... It it could be it couldn't have been put on the worst robot m- mobility wise, could it? It oh, no. really couldn't. I mean, this robot didn't even move until about a third day into the fight, pretty much. <laughs> because, uh... <laughs> I love, I just love JP's commentary. He's like, how much? How much on? What are you doing, boys? Come on! <laughs> and it's still kind of sad that because how bad Hammertron is, I still remember it more than Sonic. <laughs> that's how bad. Yeah, uh, Sonic that's is unfortunate because so, Sonic is. And no offense to no offense to Team Power, but I do think Sonic is kind of boring. Honestly, it is one of the most boring robots ever built. It's like Bulldog Breed, the original. It's just one of those robots yes. I just never remember existed. And that's not on this list either because I forgot about it. But... The only reason why I remember Sonic is just because I had um, I recorded a lot of them on VHS tape, ah. and of course, in the highlight reel, you see Chaos Two flipping Sonic around. Mm. That's the only reason I remember it. If it wasn't for that, I probably wouldn't have been able to tell you even fucking existed. So the only reason you remember it is because it, it got owned. Yeah, basically. Man, it's, man, it's the only reason you remember stealth, let's face it. Oh, God. Yeah, that's <laughs> a good point. But, <laughs> uh, so, uh, after, uh, since mine was Hammertron, what is your number eight spot? My number eight spot. Now, this one kind of pains me a little bit because it is a, one of my favourite robots. I know not everyone likes it, but it's one of my favourites. But uh, Beast of Bobman's little tusk thing. <laughs> the flipper. Yeah, well, can you call it that, really? It, it, I mean... <laughs> I'm going to say this, thank God they had a freaking wedge on them, because I tell you what, this thing was bloody awful. I mean, it, it kind of... Sh- you can see it in their fight against Stegosaurus. Yeah. Stegosaurus is on it, it's not flipping, it's not flicking. Stegosaurus tries off the wedge, it fires up, which obviously means that they were trying to flick it, it just didn't have the power to lift it up. No. Against Blade, you can see it just barely lift blade onto its side and I mean barely and even then that's only because there's a good amount of gap <laughs> between the, the weapon and blade's base plate meaning that it has enough run up speed to get a bit of leverage on there I yeah. mean yeah lads I mean come on guys you were better than this you made roadblock <laughs> for Christ's sake exactly that's I mean right. to, like I said to be fair to them they, they realised that their weapons were crap and they used their wedge to their advantage and it's a good thing like I said they had that wedge because this little thing was pathetic it really was what so you're telling me that their whole tactic they've had in series 1 and 2 still worked for them yeah uh, what <laughs> I mean it's like they tried, they tried something new it didn't work and they instantly just folded back to what they normally have and that saw by the way I mean, that saw never worked <laughs> oh no no! Was it? Was it? Is, I didn't. I, cu- I couldn't put that one on the list just because. Didn't do anything. It, it didn't do anything. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it's it's just a generic saw, but it didn't work. That's not really caliber for worst weapon of a series. It's just one didn't work properly. Yeah, also, you know, there's a difference. <laughs> yeah, also um, uh, props to the eyes. Yeah, props to the, I mean, that, 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 I love that was cool. Bomb, it's full of personality. It looks cool. It, but that weapon's bollocks. <laughs> no, I will. I will. Completely agree. Considering the fact, even in series two, the saw of the roadblock did damage to stuff. Not <laughs> the flipper is just wow. Yeah, it's so pathetic considering how considering the pedigree. Exactly. It's very similar to Three Stacks to Heaven, actually. Yes, yes. But it's all tiny. Well, to be fair, Three Stacks to Heaven spinning disc was quite powerful. It's just, I, I, it I'm, was... I'm referring to the little blade they had in extreme. Oh, what the little the little spin? <laughs> yeah, thing, yeah, that propeller thing. Man. Oh, Jesus! What yeah. the one in extreme? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was more referring to than that. <laughs> oh, that thing was dreadful, wasn't it? Speaking of dreadful, number seven <laughs> on my list. These segways write themselves. Segways. All right. Now I remember actually one time when I had I had when I had Simon Harrison on my podcast in the for the series three episode he was in. I remember he was like talking about it. And he said, "Yeah, every weapon potentially can be good if you like if you actually work on it and really improve on it." I still agree to an extent that this kind of weapon could work, but this was the very first robot to use it, and I actually think the whole name of the robot is lying alone. Forklift's revenge. It's not a fucking forklift, it's a chain lift. <laughs> Where's the forks? The forks on the front, that doesn't lift. The, 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 the hinged, that doesn't count. Yeah. <laughs> and Forkless Avenger was... So, I mean, say what you want about Forklift, the original. A, it was the first robot to get completely destroyed in, in, in Robot Wars. Yes. You know, and also, it has a forklift. 
that actually is a forklift. I mean, it didn't move, but it had a forklift. <laughs> um, Fortless Revenge doesn't have a forklift. In fact, the best part about the chain lift that makes you laugh, also honorable mention to Overkill's chain lift, which I kept forgetting it had one. Um, and also, I guess you can also include Firestorm's uh, belt in this. It's still the same cat, the same problem. Yeah. Um, and Anarachophobia. Oh, Anarachophobia, but they have one as well. But um, the thing about Fortless Revenge, I love the back of it, where it comes out and you could easily just cut it. Like, it's so exposed. Like, it's as bad as the tracks on Crusher at the very it, back. I, I'll tell you what, right? Forklift's Revenge, in my opinion, is a robot that could quite easily... It's a forgotten, terrible robot. Yeah, it's underrated, which is annoying. <laughs> yeah, it's underrated as a bad robot because there are so many terrible machines out there that get a lot of a rating. No one ever mentions this one, and it's... I mean, it's, it's atrocious. I mean, it really it's, a, atrocious. It's, it's annoying, because by my rules, I can't put Binky on this list, because its weapon was... The robot the, ro- <laughs> the robot moved, but the weapon didn't, so I don't ca- yeah. can't count it, annoyingly. But, no, Faultless Avenger is very underrated for bad robots, and it's kind of funny how... What makes me laugh out about it is, they like, technically, if you really think about it in their fight, they didn't deserve to be pitted, because they just basically got pushed into the... I think the drove got pushed into the um, circular lots of thing, and he just lifted up, chewed it up with its, with its drill, which is one of the best shots he's ever done. It'll be like that and um, Red Dragon, we both just gets the drill and just tears it. <laughs> and then it just limps about, and then he puts it in the pit. And I think, technically, while that is unfair, who cares? It's faultless revenge. Yeah, who cares? He saved our sanity. He did yeah. a lot of favour. Yeah, he saved it, because, let's face it, Suicide Tales was never going to KO this thing on its own. No. With it. So, yeah, we needed some help. But, yeah, Force Avengers quote-unquote fork chain lift is... Um, <laughs> and I agree with Simon. If you put the bigger teeth on it and actually had a weapon where you could lift it up and then push it into the pit or something, or had another weapon underneath, go ahead, make it, make it effective. Prove me wrong, audience. Prove me wrong that someone can actually make a chain lift that works. Until this point, every chain lift slash belt lift doesn't work, and it never has, because they just use regular chains. Give me a good chain lift, and then I'll I'll shut up, but until then, Fort of this Avenger is still on number 7 on my list. Go, Anderson, for your 7. <laughs> okay, my number 7, Robo Pig with that freaking <laughs> picky <laughs> lick tongue thing. So I, 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 ha- I have to be honest, I completely forgot about Robo Pig. There's that many bad robots in Series 3, yeah. I forgot I forgot I had a weapon. How can you call this thing a weapon? Right. So basically, what the idea is... <laughs> So You're laughing just thinking about it. <laughs> the idea, right, is that this spike is meant to shoot out, and then as it shoots out, it flicks up. So basically, it shoots out and either gets underneath you, or spikes you, or robot, and then flicks up to flick it over. Now, without wanting to sound too harsh, that's bollocks, okay? Mm. This thing... I, I, I don't even think they ever used it. To be no, I said, no, 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 it did. They tried to use it against Napalm, and it didn't work. <laughs> yes. What a stupid idea this is. Again, well, I'm all for original ideas. I really, really am. I love originality. Don't get me wrong. But the robot, in my opinion, was original in, in itself. It was a freaking pig. You know what I mean? Put a saw on it. Or an axe. Yeah, or an axe. Or hell, even just make it a normal, bland, generic, shooty out spike. I don't care. But the robot in itself was original. You didn't need to then try and be even more original with the spike. Again, originality is nothing without effectiveness. Yeah, and Joe, you know whilst I... I will admit, I'm happy to see the the occasional bit of effect, you know, originality that isn't effective because it's fun. This wasn't fun. It didn't add anything. It wasn't. It wasn't <laughs> like Miss Nightshade in Series Nine. Yeah, that I mean was... that was fun. <laughs> Seeing that thing land on its axis and bend <laughs> inward. It looked like a flower that had been trod on. It was brilliant. Yeah, but I mean this is just the complete opposite. <laughs> one thing I was going to add about Robopig also is that its weapon, the way it moves in particular, almost, it's like they saw Recyclops and wanted to do it, but they only had like like two pounds worth of metal. Yeah. <laughs> and then I love it even in the pit introduction as well. He pulls it out and then he lifts it up with his finger. That's not a good flipper. If you can no. do that, if you can do that, and it's actually th- thinner than your flip- your finger, you've exactly. done something wrong. You've done something wrong. If that thing had actually, co- if that thing had actually connected, it would have snapped. There's no doubt in my mind about that. I would love to see it like um, if it had, like it proved us wrong. It just flips a robot out of the arena. and We go shit. It actually did have power. <laughs> Holy crap! <laughs> Don't mess with that pig. Oof. But uh, no, I again, I, I will admit, I completely forgot about it. It probably would have appeared on the list, maybe actually, if I had remembered it. But again, I actually forgot I had a weapon. I generally <laughs> forgot how long, because I just thought it was a Brambot. 
That's and, fair enough. I mean, it, it is easy to forget because I mean, it was it's so well hidden. I mean, I'll give them that; it was really well hidden. But I actually like I actually kind of like Robopig design wise because it's just kind of funny looking. But the weapon is just no, nah, no. Exactly, that's what I mean. But the the, the, the the robot itself is original enough. You don't need to try and. Oh. No. Uh, oh number six now is a team I love, a team I hold so dear, and they made a made this thing and. Again, do they count as weapons? I don't give a shit. Death warmed up. It has <laughs> two weapons on it. It has this... I could, they called it an earthquake sword. It's a hedge trimmer. It's just a yeah. hedge trimmer in the most unfortunate place ever between the legs. Brilliant. And the trident. The floppy little trident that comes out of the back. <laughs> and it just like... It, it, it moved like twice. And the best thing about it, when it's getting lifted up by stealth, it just kind of like springs out. Then just kind of comes back in, and then it just doesn't move the rest of the whole battle because <laughs> the whole robot's on fire. Honest, I forgot about Death Warmed Up. You see, this is the problem with Series Three. I love that much yes. as I love Series Three. About seventy percent of the robots are so crap. Yeah, um, which is, I mean, for <laughs> well, at least the... the weapons are. Oh yeah, the, the weapons. weapons. The weapons are. are yeah, probably fifty percent of the robots are crap. Then fair enough. But even good robots like Beast of Warren can have bad weapons. But yes. Death Warmed Up is just so... again, it's one of those robots you forget has a weapon. Because it's just so huge. Like, that's not the part you look at. Like, the weapons are relatively well hidden on this robot. It's like, it's just this giant throne with this alien on it. And then you go, where's the weapon? That's we-? lopsided, by the way. Yeah, lopsided. Made of, the, the structure is made of wood. It's set on fire and just got completely destroyed. Only the head remains, I think, to this day. I think. I've heard, that's what I've heard anyway. Um, yeah, and in fact, it has weapons on it, which is, a, I'm surprised. It's like tons of room are so big and they couldn't put the weapon on it. This thing still has weapons. And it's this huge. And they still suck. <laughs> oh, I, I love it, though. Again, Death Warmed Up is my favourite Team Death robot, but again, I will also sometimes forget it has a weapon. Until I did... I looked... I would make, it originally wasn't on my list. And I went through weapon robots again and saw Death Warmed Up and went, oh shit, does it have a weapon? And I was like, oh shit, it does. It's that fucking saw and the yeah. trident. Fuck yeah, it, they not count. Only have one, not only does it have a weapon, it has two of the fucking things, and they're both <laughs> terrible. Two for the price of one. It's the only robot on this list that has... Actually, no, there is a ro- actually there is one of the robot on this. Uh, two of the robots on my list that have two bad weapons. The price of one. This is the first one, and the next one actually is also mine as well. As has two as well. But uh, you know, what is your number six then, Anderson? Um. So, when you build a weapon, you want it to be effective. You want it to do damage. Yes. You want it to be original. You want it to be able to do things that others don't. Mm-hmm. You don't want it to damage your own robot, which is exactly what Victor 2's flail did. Oh, I almost considered Victor 2, just for how bad it was. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, can, I can understand putting their, their lovely little flail on a, on a mount which moves up and down. Different heights of robots, different ground clearances, that's nice. Why the fuck is it a flail? You had a big bar in the last series. Okay, it wasn't the most destructive of weapons, but it would have done more than this thing. I mean, it's literally like, it's a, basically, it's a washing up line. Yeah, you know the you know it's 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 a, it's a you know it's a, um, a yeah washing washing line that's been <laughs> cut up and there's like little pieces of it just on this little thing and it did damage to itself. I mean, Victor already's a bad. Victor is already a How bad did... robot as it is. And then... <laughs> I mean, and... I can understand Victor in series two having that higher ground clearance and having that kind of weapon because one, it's series two, and two, there's obstacles. <laughs> Series 3, I've got no idea. No Imagine, idea whatsoever. Mind you, in Series 3, the auditions were obstacles again. Oh, yes, of course. That's, I, forgot, I forgot. It's, 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 why Trident ha- it's why Trident had three wheels on the front of it for some reason. It's because of that. Yeah. That's the only reason I can think of why they'd have them. Um, yeah. It's just, I mean, again, Victor 2, they, instead of just improving their weapon, they just went, oh, let's just make it worse. And that's exactly what they did. Yeah, because the actual robot itself doesn't really change. It's literally the same thing. I mean, obviously, it's, I'm sure it's different armor and the wheels are different, obviously, but the robot's still the same thing. It has yeah. that Bumblebot problem, where basically they've got the, t- they got the same robot, put a different weapon on it, made it worse. How? Yeah. <laughs> how would you, you make the walking, how would you make the coffin with slanty wheels worse? That's how. <laughs> that is, at least, thank goodness this team made the Kraken, at least, which is at least something slightly more original than this thing. Yeah, I mean, okay. One of its crosses was made out of aluminium, so I'll foil. But you know, apart from that, <laughs> uh, still better than destroying yourself entirely. Exactly. Uh, actually, I'm sorry. Also, Henry's another robot on your list. That also, kept destroying itself. Yes. <laughs> and yeah, I love that car. Oh, we got a theme going a little bit. Um, <laughs> now, I said the next robot on my list, number five, also has two ra- rubbish weapons to the price of one, 
and it's mm-hmm. Zeus. Oh, I was so close to putting Zeus on the Zeus. list. Zeus. I mean, first of all, the airbag-powered lifter. Just t- top keck. Brilliant. Um, <laughs> then you have the axe that fell off. The tip fell off as it was getting pushed by Spawn... By, by Spawn of... No, Scott, yeah, Scott, Spawn of Scotty, yeah. Scottish Revenge. I, just got, I always, get, always get those two mixed up. Yeah, Scottish Revenge. There we go. But yeah, it's just... Fuck me! It just like it just snaps off. That's the best bit. It doesn't. It just kind of goes. Eh. It just eh. and, then, <laughs> and it fell. It fell really slowly as well. And I would love to have seen Zeus against a more like actively aggressive robot like Chaos Two or Hypnodisc. Because yeah. I was. Um, I just don't know how that small thing would have done anything. Like his axe is on par with the axe on Wedgehog. Yeah, that's how bad it is. It's just oh god. Yeah. I mean, the problem is with the scoop. There's it. It's. It's almost flat. Like, you know, how would that thing get under anything? I don't know. It's got know. such a high degree angle on it, it would struggle to get under anything. It's powered by an airbag. Fuck off. <laughs> and then, the, I mean, the axe like, is powered by gravity, I think, or something like that. I don't know. That's, that's a very common thing. <laughs> what feature. I love about it is you can quite clearly see that the team captain, Julian Raffle, I think his name was, hmm. knew that he completely balls this up because literally. The mid, the second Zeus gets put in the pit, he just looks at the audience, raises down the air, and thinks, "Yep, fuck it, I'm out." <laughs> well, what else could he do? It was probably the most. It was hands down, definitely one of the most straightforward battles of Series Three. Like there was no. I actually remember watching this when it first came out, and I was genuinely. I mean, this is before you know. I was a little kid. Come on, I was like six at the time. So this, I was genuinely. This this is when I thought that every robot was like a big ultimate killing machine. <laughs> so I was genuinely surprised by how amazingly quickly. Spawn of Scutter, sorry, Scutter's Revenge, I'm doing it now. Scutter's yeah. Revenge, we're interested to get rid of them. Because it literally was a case of push it into the sidewall, okay, in the pit, see you later, cheers for coming. <laughs> <laughs> I think, on the side there, I think the reason I get those two mixed up is it always sounds like Spawn of Scutter's Revenge sounds like the second robot. Yes. Like, there's no yes, previous Scutter, which makes it even more confusing. Like, exactly. I mean, obviously, no, it's, I know it's referenced Red Dwarf, but I, I hadn't watched Red Dwarf at that time, so I didn't know what Scutter was. I was trying to remember, for life, me in Series 2, there's a robot called Scutter. Where's Scutter yeah, at? Yeah. That, 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 that's, that's, where, that's the only reason I get mixed up. But where I'm from, a Scutter's a hooker. <laughs> lovely, lo- lovely fun facts with Anderson. And yeah, uh, uh, yeah. all right, uh, number five then. What's your uh, number five then? Well, speaking of weapons powered by gravity, um, what the fuck was Backstabber's weapon all about, lads? Oh, <laughs> I mean, original, but not very good. No, I mean, we saw it move once, right? And it literally looked like it just... They just basically had a power setting. They, re- they released the power setting and it just falls down. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, do you remember those old kind of like Daffy Duck and um, Bugs Bunny cartoons where like he would get shot in the face and his bill would go backwards? <laughs> right. Basically, someone's done that to Dominator 2. <laughs> and you have Backstabber. That is basically what it is. It's Dominator 2 before Dominator 2 existed and it's, but it's worse. Yeah. And it also died as soon as it hit Razor as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Razor just scratched its side. No, it, no, it, fair play to them. It, it put up, it put up with it, and then it died. But it died. It's like, all right then. No, it died it before. Is. It died before the damage was done. It ran into Razor. and It died instantly. It's one of the biggest. Oh really? Oh, yeah. Because I mean, I mean, uh, well, that's all I can presume. Because if you think about it, if you watch that match again, if you really want to, if you watch that match again, it doesn't move after that first hit. So I presume it just died. I will admit. It is it, as far as battle is concerned, it's bollocks. But as far as fun is concerned, it's hilarious. Oh yeah, it's definitely funny. I mean, it it doesn't really show off Razor that well because it just kind of scrap. It's probably the if you go a minute, if you go try and make Razor this really big killing machine, that's the worst first battle it could have had. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, to be fair, I mean, Agrobot was also a tough one because of how tall it was. They couldn't really get a hold of it very well. No, it's really only when they got to the back of it they did anything. Exactly. It's really weird. <laughs> also, there's oh, actually there's, also. Agrobot Zonka is an, honor, is an honorary mention. I was, same I was, gonna, I was, yeah, was going to say the Zonka is an honorary mention for me as well, just because it never, it was just too unwieldy to do anything. But hey, yeah. it, it moved. It's more to say for some <laughs> robots. Uh, number four on my list, though, is a robot. Right, say for example, you're trying to think of the worst lifters from series three. What comes to mind? Well, oh uh, god, stealth up there. Stel- the Stel- stealth's a good one. Hell, death warmed up uh, technically has a lifter with its little trident thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll give you that. Um, I'll give you, that. Um, uh, you know, again, going back to uh, Forkless Revenge. Forkless um, Revenge, yes. Um, how about one that no one remembers as a lifter? Actually, even Robo Cow, but it's Forks. But oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually, in the same heat, Shark Attack. 
Oh, Christ, that thing, yeah. Because that thing, ten- <laughs> I mean, it, it wasn't active, but it counts as an active weapon because it's supposed to have moved. Um, yeah. I, well, yeah, what we get about a shark, a shark attack weapon is that it doesn't look like it has any way of moving. It's a bit like the one, in, a bit like the front of Juggernaut 2. It doesn't look like it has a mechanism. It just kind of flops over when Behemoth flips it over. It looks like a ventriloquist dummy. <laughs> now, that sort of, like, and, and the ventriloquist has gone on some sort of cocaine rampage and has just grabbed his dummy and swinging it backwards and forwards and the mouth is going... <laughs> it looked like that. We've all been there. <laughs> <laughs> but there's almost to say about Shark Attack. More than that, it just, I just can't believe it's cast as a flipper. Like, it's awful. Oh, no. Like the only thing, it'll go, the only thing going for it is the fact the flipper's low to the ground. Like it is, it's for a bucket scoop. Like if it had any force behind it, I would have been like, oh, okay, fair enough. But it doesn't. It looks like it has piss poor force behind it, and and the robot itself is so slow that it would have given it no chance to do anything. Something else about it as well. It's it's one of those odd things. I've just I've just literally thought of it now. Sat here. I mean, usually the you know the team says, "Oh, your robot's a bit rubbish for a laugh or whatever." But this is one of the few where they persistently said it and they were serious. Like Philippa literally turned around and said, "That was rubbish, wasn't it?" <laughs> and then they said, "Yeah, it was shocking. We agree." And then when you see the um the Banshee in the next, you know, because ended with Banshee the following series, and you see the the highlight reel of Shark Attack, Jonathan Bridge just going, "They got owned immediately. It wasn't impressive. Absolutely rubbish." Okay. It's better this time. Isn't that, isn't, that kind of like, isn't that kind of like their entire career on Robot Wars? Yeah, basically. Because, I mean, Banshee did, didn't last much. Credit to Banshee, though, its weapon did what it was supposed to do. And also, credit to Banshee. It's it's, also, credit to Banshee. It's actually, it's actually Nemesis. Banshee, is far, as far as art goes, is absolutely fantastic. I think. Yeah, uh, like, two seconds it lasted in the arena. True. But also, I say Banshee is actually memorable. Shark Attack is boring. Exactly. Right? I, mean, I, I, I mean, Shark Attack is just a. I mean, it's it's you, it's a big block with a shark paint on it. Yeah, it's At why I had to, Banshee had some personality. It's why I had to mention on this list because I guess again, it's one to raise awareness for how bad Shark Attack is. Not real Shark Attacks, this one, because uh, real Shark Attacks actually kill people, potentially. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right, what's your number four then? My number four now. It's a team that's been mentioned many a time <laughs> on these podcasts. Uh, many a person has a thing to mention about this team, about their machines, about how little they upgraded them. I'm, of course, talking about Napalm and its mandibles. I actually avoided Napalm. You went straight for the jugular. I like it. <laughs> yep. I'm guessing you avoided it because it was too obvious. And also, basically, it's exactly the same as when I covered it last time. Like, nothing that's changed. Like, yeah. Literally. <laughs> so... I mean, to be fair, yeah, the only... The only reason why I decided to keep it in this... I was thinking about doing the same thing, but the reason why I kept it in this one was because in the last series, technically, it was supposed to be a chainsaw. Yeah, I suppose this so. It wasn't. So, it's... but at the same time, it's it's, it's still wank. <laughs> yeah, except now this <laughs> is its really main weapon. I mean, what, what else can I say? They're, they're bollocks. They don't do anything. I think that's, that's, that's also the key difference. Like, in Series 2, it was sort of meant to be, like, the, the side event for its chainsaw. Now in Series 3, this is the weapon. This is what they have. They have yeah. nothing else. They have no backup chainsaw here that'll fall off in two seconds. They actually have this as their weapon. And if they've ever produced... A t- I might do this in the future. of top ten worst fights in Road Wars. Versus Caterkiller. Just kill me. Two slow robots running around each other. I'll say running around. Walking around each other. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. And the mandibles never did anything. And then just watching it pounced on by Stegosaurus was so fun. Oh, that was good. But a fair play to it for surviving. You have to give it that. <laughs> Just barely, but it survived. I'll give it for series one tech, pretty much. It's, it, it worked. <laughs> it worked. Um, is there anything else we talk about? Napalm, which it sucks. End of. It's bollocks. Yeah. End of. End Number of. three is one of your favourites from series three. I know you love this robot. Um, oh, yeah. The Iron Mask. Oh, wonderful. Because, yeah. I mean, I know I said Not a lot of... Machine. I mean, can you call that an axe? Can you, can you even call that a weapon? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, technically it moves. Piece, it's <laughs> a piece of plastic. Pretty much. I love it. Right? It's one of the funniest things ever. I still find it funny this when I walk... Because I watch the heat quite a lot because it's a good heat, in my opinion. Mm. And whenever you see the team, you see... <laughs> You see the team, and they're sat there, and it's like, oh, this is our robot, the iron mask and all that, and we've got this dangerous axe on it. And as he says that, his son just moves his little... Very delicately. <laughs> yeah, but, 
Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <He's> like, mm, <laughs> well, that ain't gonna go very far, is it? I, I refer Fuck to I, I refer to the um, uh, once again I mentioned Sam Harrison because he, he was on the Heat for us because that was with King Buxton's Heat when he yeah. appeared on it. I say he loved how delicately he lifted the axe up and down, and I was I, I remember I think it was me you who said the joke saying yeah tin for all bends very easily so you would yeah <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's, I mean again this is probably the jokiest one out of the entire you know, list for me, but I, again I have to mention it because it's so infamously infamously bad. Like out of all the axes, bar one, which you know might be on my list at some point, bar one, I'll the only credit I can ever give the Iron Mask's quote unquote axe is it moves fast, but with no power. Yeah. <laughs> it's basically like a small version of Anarachophobia's axe. All show but nothing to nothing for it. Exactly. Except it's even dinkier, and its weapon motor is <laughs> right next to it. So it's like <laughs> that's basically like actually it's actually like an ant weight axe. That's how bad it is. It's basically an ant weight axe's weapon. That's yeah. actually that's, 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 that's ramming an... teeth that are, that's actually a beard. Oh yeah, the big old beard. Yeah, I forgot about that. And the weird little spokes they have on the wheels, like have a boudica type thing. Bit, bit, bit what Brimher was going to do, which I almost put on the villain list as well, because technically they do have a have a, a weapon, which is that little spike that's spring powered, but they were just so boring I couldn't be asked to put them on the list. But there you go, that's Brimher's honorable mention, I guess, or dishonorable mention. Um, so yeah, what's your number three then, Anderson? Well, it's a robot that you mentioned earlier, Forklift's Revenge, for the exact same reasons. Next, fair enough. <laughs> that makes our life a lot easier. I guess my number it two does. then. My <laughs> number two then for me, um, dear God, this is possibly one of my least favorite robots of all time, cause it's boring. Its weapon barely exists, and it has possibly the most boring fights ever. Spike. Oh God, Spike. Spike's <laughs> quote unquote Spike, which is funny, cause you see the Spike, and it's a too high. It, Okay, Blade isn't the lowest robot in the world. It's probably about medium low. But it couldn't hit Blade. It's way up or high up. I love it's covered in plastic, which kept flying off, which is the only time Blade's weapon ever worked. Which is the, the, the only time it should have worked. It was hilarious watching it just go flying everywhere. But then it's a spike, and it comes out about like a millimetre, and it goes really slowly. And it's like a foot up off the ground as well, so it's not going to hit, well, anything. <laughs> no. I mean, it was just like resting on top of on top of Blade, which is funny. It just kind of just sat there. Yeah. The plastic guns would have done more damage, for Christ's sake. Oh, yeah, it had guns, in it? On this little deck hall. I forgot about that. Yeah. God, Blade is so boring. Like, it's so slow. And I think what I've said this before about Blade is, unlike slow robots... The, like shrapnel's slow, but it at least turns with some kind of motion. Um, bl- uh, Spike, on the other hand, it kind of like has to go forwards, then turn a bit, then go forwards. It yeah. takes forever to turn round, and there's a wonder why Blade just ignored the cease and just pushed him in the pit because well, who gives a shit? It's his <laughs> Spike, <laughs> and also and hands down the worst. Two names for robots against each other: Spike versus Blade. I mean, you've yeah. got that. You got it. That's probably the blandest fight battle ever. The fight that ever. That had to be purposeful. They had to have done that on purpose. There's no way they couldn't have done that on purpose. I mean, it could have been worse. You could have had like Flipper versus Henry, or Henry versus Eric. <laughs> that that would have been funny. That would have been funny, admittedly. At least, at least Eric would have got a win then. <laughs> But well, <laughs> no, but, no, but I, I wish that had happened now. Damn it! Oh well. Uh, but yeah, Spike is bland, boring, and its weapon is barely a weapon. But unfortunately, it does actually move. So yeah, damn it. Um, number two then for the worst, Anderson. Um, well, it's a robot that's a bread bin on wheels and a terrible axe. It is of course the Iron Mask. Hey. Okay, same reasons. I'm sorry, I'm stealing all your picks here. You get it, yeah. <laughs> now, now, just before we go on, I just want to quickly say, from what you said earlier about maybe one of the racks being worse, <laughs> I think we both picked the same robot here again. Don't say, don't, don't, don't say you've picked Orax Revenge. No, I haven't. Trident. No. Oh, Sergeant Meekle in it. Let's just beat around the bush. Sar- Sergeant Meekle. Fucking yeah, Sergeant Meekle. Right, well, at least we can talk about it now then. Sergeant <laughs> Bloody Meekle. 
<laughs> right. Okay. We'll, we'll get the axe out of the way first. The axe drops <laughs> in parts. That's yeah. the best part about it. Like, every other axe I think can think of that's bad on this list. Hammertron. Zeus. Sp- uh, fucking iron masks. They all actually move. Yeah, in one motion. motion. Even yeah, Bumblebot moves motion. in one motion. If it doesn't go back up yeah. again. Even Backstabber did. Yeah. Um, and they just let their axe drop down. <laughs> I mean, in fairness, the mouse powering it has a very has, has been on hunger strike for a while. <laughs> so it's not it's not fully up. Yeah, it's not really fully motivated. So it's not gonna, the axe is not always going to work. Um, but one thing people forget is it has a spike as well. Yeah, a spike that lifts. It, yeah, and also lifts up the robot, <laughs> which I find even weird. I mean, I'm not sure if that actually is either them lifting it or pushing it, or if it was the fact it, it shouldn't be doing that. If that's the case, um, it didn't really use the spike really. I mean, it came out like one mile an hour anyway, so it didn't work. Yeah. I mean, give Hefty credit; that weapon actually managed to throw it halfway across the arena <laughs> from when it was yeah. from it was against the wall. But oh, Sergeant Meikle, it's just the definition of. Bland, bad, and boring series three robot. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Not only was it like I said, I mean, the spike was halfway up a wedge, and when it did shoot out, only a millimeter of the spike actually stuck out of part past this wedge. No, it acts like you said. I mean, it, it would like fall a bit, stop, fall a bit, stop, fall a bit, stop. But the best bit about it as well is if you see it right, it would wobble something mm. fierce. It was like a bobblehead that thing. And also, it's the only robot that Dark Destroyer could fucking de- do any damage to. <laughs> That's how good it was. And also, I mean, there's, there's like trifecta. It did, but it's terrible weapons. It has bad armor. Actually, also another thing is the fact it never looks like the same shape though. Which way you look at it, like you look at it from the front, it's like this tall robot. You look at it from the side, it turns like it goes flatter somehow. I don't know how you do that. Like every angle, of this robot never looks the same. So I can never tell what it's supposed to look like. And it's named after someone. It's named after someone. That is the saddest thing. Ever, yeah, because that person has to go around the rest of his life saying that pile of shit was named after me. They got court martialed after that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, or he got court martialed for being associated with Sergeant Meikle. It's just, I don't know. It's just so funny. It's like when you when you have this like a really bad video game that's dedicated to an employee that died working on it, and it's like after all that, it ends up being shit. And it's like, oh fuck, Sergeant Meikle. It is the definition of Series 3 bad robots. Um, if it wasn't for how bland it was, Brimher might be on that list as well. Brimher is probably the most blandest yeah. robot from Series 3, but... Yeah, I mean, they could have, they could have put a lick of freaking paint on it, at least. Yeah, it's so black, it's so dull, it's so... It's like how it... It's a bit, it looks like how it came out of the factory, and they just left it like that. It's just... Yeah. And the axe is shite, so we'll just get out of the way. The axe is shite. <laughs> um, the funny thing is, it actually kind of looks cool, the design of it, but then you realise how bad, f- badly it functions. Like, it's so impractical. It's, it's like I mean, a... It's, it's, just an, it's an odd shape as well. Like, I mean, all the shapes to make, why that? It's like a feather. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't... <laughs> It's about and the robot itself as well, it just looks stupid. I mean, it's meant to look like a stealth bomber. Is it? Really? I say, I, <laughs> hell, Dark Destroyer looked more like a stealth bomber than that. Exactly. It looks like stealth! A, it, looks like a steroid, it looks like a steroid elephant shit. Like, I'll give stealth credit. It was crap, but it looked apart. If it didn't do anything. Exactly. Um, but, oh, Jesus. To be fair, stealth was also supposed to be on this list, by the way. That flipper, fuck me. Well, it didn't work for a start, the flipper. <laughs> and the saw. <laughs> The sword that was so bad, Hitler just didn't use his A game to take it off. <laughs> just like lift up by the spike. Oh, I took your fl- oh, I took your, took your sword off. Cool. Anyway, back to the fight. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, Sergeant Meikle, the worst of the worst. So bad that you and Anson are both agreed on how shit it is. Wow. Yeah. Well, in that case, I am very happy because we actually got some good variety there once again. We only we only yeah, shared we only shared the thing about uh, four robots. We shared out of six. Yeah, that's and the bad idea, because we both went on. We had Sergeant Meikle, Iron Mask... Fortless Avenge, and... Na- and, uh... Fortless Avenge... Oh, no, oh, no, that's actually, I think it's three, actually. That's it? Yeah, it is, yeah. Yeah, three. Oh, sorry, three out of it. So, yeah, three out, three three out, out of ten. That's amazing. We shared a lot more with the best, yeah, ten, yeah. but the worst. That's good. Well, it shows you how crap Series 3 was, in some regards. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, if you liked this video, hopefully I'm going to try and go for the entire series. Hopefully I try not to pick the same robots every time for the best, because, let's face it, there's a lot of overlap with the best. 
Um, I'll try and vary up a bit more often when we get to the later series, because uh, we don't want to see Razor, Hypnodisc, Firestorm, and Chaos 2 in every fucking list. So, yeah. you know, we'll try and vary up. The worst, though, can go forever. Those can be... F- those are fun. I think we'll admit, though, we'll admit, though, I do think series... Series 4 is relatively hard, cause it isn't... Compared to some other series. And maybe series... Yeah, I, mean, I, I can think of a couple. All I can think of... Um, I mean, I, I'm not going to say them now, obviously, but I can think of a few yeah. that are very obvious. But most of them are just kind of like... They just didn't really work very well, as opposed to... Oh, no, that was terrible. But... Anyway. Uh, that is the worst video. Uh, thank you, Anson, for joining me for both of these. Uh, You're very a... much welcome. It's been a pleasure and displeasure at the same time. Yes, and hopefully I'll get these two uploaded, um, and then soon I will be doing another episode of the Ro- of Robo Tales. The uh, for, I was the first episode was, was with um, Two Penny Milk, aka Anthony from Team from Team Penny now, former Team S Tech, and uh, I will not reveal who I am doing, but let's just say I am very excited who I've got with me. So. Um, I am Jim Dramatic, signing off for the worst video. And I am Anders9132, the Robot Wars Guru, and I'm going to go to bed. Bye!